What up guys? So today I'm going to talk to you about how I started my video production business that ended me on the Gary Vee book crushing it and I'm pretty much tell you the steps of how I did it and how I went from having literally zero dollars from making an account to making over a hundred thousand dollars in just two years. So first things first, I started my business and my career by doing a lot of free stuff for friends. Over the time, I started charging $50 for video, $100 for video. Eventually, that grew to what I currently charge around $1,600 to $2,000 for my day rate. That does not include editing or anything like that. So a lot of my stuff, when I first started out and I was living in New York City, I did a lot of fashion stuff, which is great. It was a lot of fun. I got to learn my craft. And this is probably one of the most important things. One of the fundamentals is learning your craft, learning composition. From there, I started to transition to working with a publication and doing short interviews for a magazine. What this really allowed me to do and open my mind to is this whole other side of video for businesses. And this is the area that I don't see a lot of people talking about online. A lot of people talk about wanting to do music videos and doing all these different things, which those are fun, but they're very inconsistent and most of the time very low paying. Now, focusing on working with businesses will open up my eyes as to the needs of business owners and being able to provide them an actual video as marketing collateral really helped them get a better return on investment through their marketing. So first thing I did at that time, um, I was working as a bartender. And what the bartending gig allowed me to do was that I was able to actually save money, work nights, and have my days free to work on video projects. So as my craft grew and my skills got better, I ended up bartering with the place I was working at and offered to do a video for them, which you could actually find online. It's linked right up here um, for 200 bucks for me to come in, shoot them a video. What I end up doing next, I used that video to show another business owner when I moved back to Florida, what I've done in the past. Because something I didn't realize is that with, when you're working with business owners, the thing you want to do is minimize risks for them. And pretty much what I, the problem that I had is that a lot of my stuff I ended up working with a lot of like celebrities doing fashion stuff. To a business owner, you're not being able to show them a business video. They're taking a risk and a chance on you. So the next person that I actually reached out to was my barber. I showed my barber the business video that I did for the restaurant and asked him if I could shoot an interview, pretty much doing a promo for his business. He then said yes. Now I had two business videos that I actually showed somebody else. From there, I asked him because he's a barber and this is something else that he could do. He knows a lot of different business owners. I asked him to introduce me to a couple of people. Uh, anyone that might have a marketing agency and any other other business owners that I could talk to. So that's something that was working on the background as I'm working on my business. The next thing I did is that I started to realize that a really good market for you to be in was was working with dentists. So I ended up reaching out to a bunch of dentists and offered them to do a video. The way that I did this is that I went online. I found uh, I went online through Google found a bunch of good reviews that I found for a dentist. I made him a video. I ranked that video on YouTube for, you know, Lake Court Dentist, which I'll link that here. Then I emailed the dentist like, hey, doctor, so-and-so, uh, I'm new to the area. I saw your business and saw all these great reviews that you have. Uh, I made a video for you. Check it out. It's ranked on the first page of YouTube. Let me know what you think. By asking him, you know, let me know what you think, created, allowed me and him to have a conversation. So from there, followed up with him. He's like, hey, so like, what are you looking to do? And I was like, listen, I'm new to the business. Here's my two videos I've done in the past for other businesses. I do have other experience shooting videos, but most of that was based around fashion. I love the opportunity to work with you on creating a free business video for you in exchange for a review and a referral to another dentist. He agreed to that. So, and this is all done for free. And the reason that I did these three videos for free was to gain the experience because throughout shooting those three videos, a lot of things happened that I didn't expect to happen, but it allowed me to learn on a job without messing up for the client. It's one thing that, you know, you're shooting a free video for a client and the audio doesn't come out right. And there's little things that happen that you didn't plan to. But when you start charging business owners money, 
for video and things mess up, even if it's 200 bucks, even if it's a hundred dollars, they're going to be a pain to work with by charging them nothing it allowed me to have full creative spectrum over the project and allowed me to do what I needed to do. So from there, this dentist ended up referring me to my next dentist that I worked with, which then paid me $1,800 for my video. So I ended up repeating that process long enough to have about five to six videos on my website that were all around businesses. The next thing I did, I set up my Google business page. I ended up uh, I ended up having to go through a rebrand because when I was living in New York, I was Rodrigo Tosca Productions. When it came to Florida, I had a I had a really big issue reaching out to people, telling them, "Hey, I'm Rodrigo Tosca from Rodrigo Tosca Productions." People didn't want to listen to me, so I ended up rebranding to Tosca Studios. And at that point, I was uh, living in my mom's house, sharing a room with my sister, sleeping on an air mattress, getting up at six a.m., grinding my face off. So. From there, ended up building a website through Squarespace, ended up listing my business on Google My Business, on Bing Places, and Yelp, because these are all directories that business owners go to to look for your services. You implementing your business information there allows them to find you and contact you while you're working in your business. Now that I have my business set up, I have my business listings online, I started reaching out to marketing agencies in my area that didn't offer video. Now, the reason I did this is that it allowed me to work with another company that already had existing clients that are already spending money on marketing, but weren't servicing their needs with video. So pretty much what I did, I ended up giving that marketing agency anywhere from five to 15% of the leads that they were sending me. And these are hot, warm leads, people that are ready to shoot a video. So, you know, I'm more than willing and more than happy to give somebody, you know, five to 15% for a hot lead because that's something that allows me to just be able to work on the videos and work on my business. And I spend time actually looking for cold clients or, you know, going through the process of nature and clients. So throughout this whole process here, I still shot a lot of free videos and then still got a lot of different opportunities. I ended up working with a nonprofit organization that allowed me to go to Nicaragua for a week. I got to travel. I got to travel. I got to, you know, work on a mini documentary in Spanish, which is something that I've never had done before. I ended up using kind of the same process to reach out to a band that I liked that were going to tour to Bonnaroo. I pretty much offered them like, hey, I'm willing to work for you for free. I'm gonna give you three videos if I can come to if I can come with you and tour to go to Bonnaroo, which was an amazing experience. And all of that content, all of those things that I did are all skills that I didn't use on actual paying projects. So another big thing that really helped me was to keep my living costs low. So when I moved back here to South Florida, I was staying with a friend and then I decided to move back to my mom's house because I needed to save money. But me saving money allowed me to, number one, take on really low paying jobs that allowed me to build my portfolio and build a network with clients. But number two, not have me stress about having to spend anywhere from you know, 800 to you know, 12 or $1,200 a month on rent. I wanted to keep my expenses as low as possible so I could, could keep in reinvesting into my business. The next thing I wanted to do was build my network. I wanted to be able to, you know, I joined a uh, local organization here, Creative Mornings, that had a lot of different creative people. And, uh, you know, that network allowed me to meet with a lot of other business owners, allowed me to meet with a lot of different, you know, creatives that then connected me to different opportunities. And these are all things that were done for free. Pretty much at this time, the only thing I had paid for was my website so I could actually show my um, clients my work. This is another thing that I see all the time. When you actually are showing your client work, do not tell your client to just go to your website. Tell, send your client a link to a playlist that you have all your videos in. If you're telling your client to go look for your work and for them to go type in your website to then find you, you're giving them work to do. As business owners, we don't have time for that. You're gonna make this as simple as possible. So I recommend you put all of your videos on YouTube, make them into one playlist, and then if you can, 
categorize those into different types of playlists. So if you are working with a dentist, only show him dentist videos. If you're working with a restaurant, only show them restaurant videos. If you're just starting out and you only have a bunch of different mixture videos, just have all of that in one playlist, but you wanna make it super easy for the business owners to be able to find you and to, for them to be able to see your work. Do not make them work for it. Sick. Okay, next thing here. So throughout this process, I ended up finding another gig that was paying me 150 bucks to go out and shoot uh, people at the restaurant for about five hours. So I did this every weekend for a year. So I was making 300 bucks guaranteed every week from this. And this is the other thing that you want to work on. You want to find yourself clientele when you're starting out that can be consistent with paying you as you're working on your skill, as you're working on your business, because this is going to allow you to, like I said, take on lower paying jobs that is going to build your skill and your portfolio so then you could actually start getting those higher paying jobs. So the three niches that I recommend for this are going to be real estate, car dealership photos, and restaurants. Those people, you can usually probably get anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks for videos, maybe even more. But this is one of those things that, you know, if you're just starting out, I re I'd rather shoot a bunch of these type of videos than for me at that time being a bartender and working at a restaurant, I wanted to get out of that industry. So working at a restaurant, I was making anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks a night. I'd rather spend 10 hours, 12 hours, even 20 hours shooting a video for 200 bucks versus going to go work at a restaurant. So that's the mentality that, that I had when I started out. And that's what I you know uh, I recommend for you to do. I also was a butler when I was living in New York. I was, uh, I was a butler from Friday, Friday afternoon till Sunday evening. I was working pretty much, you know, 36 hours nonstop, 48 hours sometimes for this family. But then I had pretty much Monday, through Thursday, free to work on my craft, do a bunch of free stuff. So that's the way, that's the way that you want to kind of figure it out. What can you do to hack your life that allows you to work a minimal amount of time in just a couple of days and freeze up the rest of your schedule to actually work on this business? Because a lot of the days when you're actually running a business, is not going to be spent you actually shooting and doing these different things. It's going to be you actually working on the business editing projects, doing all these little nuances that you have to handle as your business grows. So um, other jobs that you could do, uh, catering is another really good one, do bartending, valet, all these different things are going to allow you to one, get out there and communicate and meet with people, but then also allows you to work a very small amount of time and make a good amount of money. You're going to make a couple hundred bucks a week then allows you to actually work on your business. All right. Uh, okay, next thing. So this is my personal recommendation. I'm not a lawyer, um, so you should talk to one before doing this. I'm just letting you guys know how I did this. For my first year of business, I did not have an LLC. I did not have insurance. I did not have any of those things. I was pretty much getting paid everything under the table. So for me to go out and get an LLC for 200 bucks, didn't have to file taxes the next year and spend another $400, just didn't make sense for me. Um, you know, the business wasn't really thriving. I think my first year business, I did about 30 to $40,000 and everything's pretty much still sent to my name. My clients were people that I knew, so they were paying me through Venmo, they are paying me through PayPal. It wasn't until I got my first big check for about $3,200, I shot a series of real estate photos and videos for a broker, and they made the check out to uh, Tasca Studios, and my bank account rejected a check, saying that that was the name, that the amount was too big. So that was the time that I decided to actually start my LLC, and I still do have an LLC. Um, but one thing that I did invest that would make your life a lot easier is QuickBooks. You can set up QuickBooks for about $5 a month and have all of your invoices done through there. A lot of your taxes, a lot of your expenses can go through there. It does uh, mileage tracking for you. I have a link below for that. It is an affiliate link um, that I've been set up through them. And that's something that I highly recommend that you do is to make your life easier. For the $5 a month, that is a business expense that you actually end up getting to write out. At the next year, maybe at your first year, it won't be a business expense. 
but it will definitely make your life a lot easier. I promise you that. That's one thing I do recommend. Um, I just started doing 10, 1099s over the past year and, uh, you know, using our LLC and all of that. I don't think you should really focus on all of that when you're just starting out, but this is really just to kind of cover and touch base on a couple of different things. Now, the riches are in niches, but when you're starting out is shoot everything, anything to figure out what is it that you actually want to do. Um, you know, I, en I ended up deciding to specialize on small to medium sized businesses because I find a huge market with that. These business owners are willing to spend anywhere from three to six, even $10,000 for you to shoot videos for them. And this is consistent work. It allowed me to buy a lot of the gear that I have now and allowed me to travel and allowed me to do a lot of different things that when I was working with, you know, artists and doing events and things like that, I was really just scraping by and, and I kind of got over that. So other great industries for you to go to are service-based businesses and businesses that have high lifetime value clients are the ones you want to focus on. So for an instance, doctors, uh, dentists, plastic surgeons, like a dentist can charge you $400 to do a root canal. If you can justify them that in a matter of a year, four people will see this video and decide to get a root canal for them when you're charging them $2,000, they could justify that spending. But if you go to a restaurant and tell them, hey, I'm gonna charge you $1,000 to do a video, for them, $1,000 is such a huge expense. They have to have such a high number of turnover and tables for them to recoup that money. Also because the restaurant has such a high level of uh, overhead cost. So other great places or other great companies for you to work with or roofing companies are really great to work with and make a shit ton of money. Uh, flooring companies, AC, all the different type of companies that spend a lot of money that they get a lot of high, uh, big tickets. Do the big thing and kind of just going back to uh, the previous part of this is that you need to understand how much money are you making right now. You need to have that figured out. Like I said, for me, I was making 100, 150 bucks a day, working three to four days a week to pay my bills. So if you look at the math for that, that means that I was making, you know, $500 a week doing bartending, waiting, um, catering stuff. So if I could work one video a month that paid me, you know, anywhere between two to $3,000, that to me was way smarter than actually working all these different hours. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you realize that if you can work 10 hours a day on one video and charge somebody 200 bucks, and you're doing that twice a week, even if you do it twice a week, you can still make a good amount of money, but you need to figure out what your expenses are first. And then if you can realize where can you minimize those expenses? When I was living at my mom's house for that first year or actually about a year and a half, it was tough, you know what I mean? But it really allowed me to excel to where I'm at today. It allowed me to get in the car, it allowed me to move to a bigger, better place. It allowed me to you know, buy two Sony A7s and all these different types of gear. And, um, you know, those are the things that you want to do when you're starting out. Minimize your costs. Minimize your costs is definitely one of the biggest one. Now, just to kind of wrap everything in, um, I know this video kind of got a little long and I kind of rent, rented in a couple of different places, but this is me just starting out with this YouTube thing. And I really just want to bring you guys some value into this. I don't want to make this a super edited type of video. I just really want to get you guys out some facts is your camera gear is not as important as you think. I started my business for the first two years shooting on a D7100 with a Sigma 17 to 49 millimeter 2.8. I had two of those. I had two newer lights. And um, I think at that time I, was, I had some type of lab system. Those are really the biggest things that you're going to need to kind of work with business owners like this is get yourself, uh, you know, a good set of cameras, uh, a good set of glass, uh, lighting, you know, my first light kit was under 200 bucks. I think I probably spent $400 on my, uh, lav mics right now. You can get the road mics for 200 bucks. Those are great. I use those a lot right now. I'll probably start with something like that. So if you do have the money, get an Aperture 120, Get yourself, you know, uh, you don't have to get a Sony a7 III. You can start off with like, you know, uh, the S, or not the S, you can start off with, you know, one of the 
a 6500 something small like that you just need a good glass you need like a 50 millimeter 1.8 and you're good to go if you have two of the same cameras two of the same lenses it only makes it look a lot better for you for these different types of interviews but you don't need all these different types of crazy gear not until you start making money on your second and third year so I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Let me know what you guys wanna learn next. Um, you know, I'm thinking about maybe doing a type of video on you know, how to get those clients to actually help to communicate with them. If you wanna see some of those emails, let me know in the comments. I'd love to find out more what you guys wanna learn. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.